This is my second day in the Faroe Islands. Good morning. I had a really good sleep last night. My first night in Faroe Island. <laughs> I wonder how's the weather today outside. I hope it's better. Let's find out. Let me draw the curtain. It's not bad. It's still cloudy, but at least it's not windy and rainy like yesterday. And look at the sky. It looks like it might be sunny in a few hours. My host suggested me to have a look at some uh, cities nearby later. Because it's Saturday, she might be able to take me around. She's so nice. I am in a desperate need of looking good because I haven't had proper sleep for days, as some of you might know from my previous videos. I slept in the airport last night, and uh, before last night, I was so busy handing over my works and dealing with some work-related things, so I look like shit. <laughs> But last night was spent well, my first night in Vero Island, before sleeping. My host and her son had prepared me a very cute dinner. We had dinner together and had some nice chat. But I went to bed early because I was just so sleepy. If you have watched some of my videos, then you'll know I am in the Vero Island for a long holiday for taking a break from my work and my life in general. I'm not saying I don't like my life, but I would always like to try something new. And so this will be a very long holiday. So usually for trips lasting longer than a month, I would like to stay with some local families. And not only I can be more immersed into the local culture, but also they provide accommodations. So how? When I was a student, I used to travel a lot in Europe. Sometimes I take long trips lasting more than a month. And back then I used couch surfing a lot. But nowadays it's not a thing anymore. Nobody's using it. So this time I chose, uh, so this time I found this family on a website called Workaway, which a friend had introduced it to me. He had a lot of good experience on this platform. So I thought, why not trying it? So this is actually my first time, my first workaway experience. Everything went well so far. So basically on this website, you can find local families, which you can provide some help to. In exchange, they can provide you accommodation and sometimes meals as well. Most of the help needed is babysitting and cooking, housekeeping, dog walking, these kind of things, depending on the family, depending on the location. Well, my host didn't really specify what kind of help she needs and she haven't given me any assignment. And yesterday we were chatting, I randomly asked whether if it's easy to find a job in the Faroe Islands. And she asked, what's my background? I told her it's fashion related. So she is going to drive me to this fashion company in the afternoon where we can ask about job opportunities. So nice of her. And so let's see, maybe I'll end up working in the island and living here long term. In the afternoon, my host came back from work. We did some chores in the kitchen together. Meanwhile, I had a nice talk about the employment situation of the Faroe Islands. There is very low... Uh, unemployment. Right? Unemployment. Yes, yeah. I heard about this. Although our conversation about the jobs and income here is super interesting, it was quite long. So I'm just gonna make a summary video later on regarding this topic. But a spoiler first, the average salary is high, the working condition is good, and people are happy. Please leave a comment if you found this interesting and want to see it. So every Faroese will have one. Yes, uh, and, and it's very normal to have um, some of these, you know, as a uh, entree 
so you can get one before you get inside. Ah, okay, it's like a slipper. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And this is a whole holster or pulse holster. Mm -hmm. You the also call it uplenta uh, soccer. It's really nice. Wow, it's a rare sunny day. Look at the sun. <laughs> so Anna is going to take me to tour around a little bit. Where are we going? Topter. Topter. And Jack. Jack. Let's go. So Anna has taken me to this place to have a look at the rainbow. Wow! Not sure if you can see it over there. Very tiny part. Faroe Island is the land of maybe, right? Because the weather is so unpredictable. Just a minute ago it was sunny and now it's rainy. And then it might be sunny a few minutes later again. <laughs> This subsea tunnel has become a tourist attraction, for it has the world's first subsea roundabout. So, Anna took me to It's a local knitwear brand. Hello. 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 Good morning. Hello. These are what you have shown me in the morning, right? Yeah. Wow, well, it is expensive. Two pairs for... 729. No, 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 it's, a, it's a one. Oh, okay, okay. 129. It's all good. <laughs> Navia is one of the leading companies in the yarn and sweater industry in the Faroe Islands. In their store, you can find a lot of knitting products with traditional Faroe East patterns. So when the machine finishes its job, you just have to cut the little as planned, I asked the owner if I could use my skill to work there. They are open to seeing my CV, which I am going to send them later. This little clock here, how do you use it correctly? How do you do it? So if you um, come at the five o'clock, mm -hmm. you put it at five. Uh -huh. Then they see, okay, if you, you're not allowed to stay more than one hour. When parking in Toshan, it's very important to set the clock correctly and leave within an hour. Failure to do so will result in a fine. I can't stay with you with my car. So we are uh, we passed by a village, very nice, beautiful village by the sea, where Anna has a friend who has a vacation house here. Wow. And this is the village. We had some great tea and chocolate while having a nice chat with the idyllic view from the window. It was really lovely to visit Anna's friend's house. And they told me in this village there are only 47 residents, so everyone knows each other. Wait until they pass first, right? Yeah, but it's funny. What are you looking at? This is another village Anna is taking me to. It's called Jack. 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 What's special about this village? This area. Oh, the fjord. The sea, sea, oh, cool. yeah, yeah. And you can see a lot of interesting houses in this village. It's a must-visit place. <laughs> yes. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Yes? 
You be careful too. The name of the village Jack means gorge is one of the most popular attractions in the Faroe Islands that should not be missed by any visitor. According to Wikipedia, the population of Jack at present is 49. How the village dotted the endless mountain is breathtaking. But the gorge here is what keeps appealing both travelers and locals alike. Not only the village is cute, the gorge here is super spectacular as well. You can walk down from the stairs and get very deep down into the gorge. I could imagine in the summertime there might be people swimming in here because the water is super clear. You can see the bottom. It's quite slippery everywhere. So if you are coming to the Faroe Islands, make sure you wear something sturdy and has a good grip. It's super muddy because it's rainy all the time. So if you're coming to here, be prepared to go home with a pair of super dirty shoes. Anna took me to so many amazing places. The landscape here shocks me not only visually, but emotionally as well. Everything looks surreal and dramatic, unlike any of the places I've been. taking me around today we've seen so many beautiful places so I thought I would like to make them a dinner tonight and now I am ready we've been to the supermarket I bought a lot of ingredients I am going to make them a gluten-free bread a curry chicken and a Chinese dish let's get on with it so I brought this soya bean powders from Hungary it's a very good gluten-free recipe so I'll just mix these soybean powders with um, rice flour or cornstarch, whatever flour and with eggs. A very nice bread will come out. This recipe is super easy as long as you have the soybean powder. It doesn't really matter what type of flour you mix it with. With a little milk. With some eggs, separate the egg white and the yolk. I used three eggs, but I think the amount of egg doesn't really matter because it's an easy recipe. You can improvise about the number of eggs used. I put one teaspoon of salt into the egg white. So this is going to be a salty bread. If you want it to be sweet, feel free to put some sugar in it. Beat the egg white until it's stiff. Then mix it with the batter. Host has some gluten-free flour in here. It is my first time to use this sort of flour. I hope the result will be good because at home I usually just use rice flour. And then you can put some walnut on it. And now I am going to uh, prepare some curry chicken. So my curry chicken is not really authentic, so I already mixed the chicken with some potato with a curry and coconut milk, some onions, mixed vegetables with broccoli, uh, bell pepper, and uh, different colors of bell peppers. First I put some coconut oil in it, then some onions. 
So while I'm cooking, Anna showed me there are two politicians. They are going to swim in the icy cold water, it, and it's live now. <laughs> The, uh, the curve they are doing now in the beginning of October. The next one I'm gonna make is a traditional Chinese dish, tomato eggs. And when you're done frying the eggs, you put the tomatoes in. It's nice. So all together, I made the curry chicken, the rice, tomato egg, the gluten-free bread. Yeah, this is what we are having for dinner. I think we maybe could manage it. Oh, okay. After the dinner, I am going to prepare something for tomorrow's hike. Tomorrow, I am going to go with my Chinese friends to God Guadalcanal. 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 It's a very beautiful place. It's a. If you look at any postcard or on Instagram, you can see a lot of photo of this place. So tomorrow is going to be a Chinese vlog. And I'll put some cheese with it. So it's like a cheese sandwich.